The next law that we'll discuss is known as Charles' Law. And Charles' Law tells us the relationship between the volume of a gas and temperature. with every other uh, property being held constant. So if you think about this, uh, we can think about, say, another gas sample like that in a balloon. Uh, though that balloon is comprised of gas molecules, of course, uh, increasing their temperature will increase their kinetic energy. So they're moving faster, and so when they strike the uh, inside of the container that they're in, in this case a balloon, at constant pressure, uh, external pressure, the uh, pressure inside the balloon will actually increase, causing the volume to increase as well. So it turns out that temperature and volume of a gas are directly proportional. So if we were to plot temperature as a function of volume, or rather volume as a function of temperature, we would see a plot that looks like this where as we increase the temperature, the volume goes up. If we were to decrease the temperature, the volume would go down. This is known as a directly proportional relationship. So volume is directly proportional to temperature for a gas. And so we could write this as a mathematical function. So volume is proportional to temperature, using the Greek letter alpha as the proportional. Uh, we could also derive an equation from this relationship. We can think about this function, this uh, relationship. If we were to do this experiment a couple of times, uh, we would see that this time the volume over the temperature would give us the slope of this line, or the function, so volume over temperature gives us a constant, which we call K. If we increase the temperature, the volume would increase accordingly. And so, uh, but the uh, ratio of volume to temperature would equal the same constant. And so if we wanted to keep our volume and temperatures uh, straight, uh, we would call the volume in our first experiment V1, the temperature in our first experiment T1, the volume in our second experiment, V2, and the temperature in our second experiment, T2. And so, uh, since both of these values equal the same constant, they are also equal to each other. And so we can say V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And so if we uh, know our initial conditions, say initial volume and temperature, we could calculate the new volume if we raise or decrease uh, the temperature, or we could uh, calculate the temperature if we know uh, volume at a second uh, point in time, if the temperature has changed. The next law that we'll talk about is known as Gay-Lussac's law, and this gives us the relationship between temperature and pressure of a gas. So the relationship between temperature and pressure of a gas, again, all other properties being uh, held constant. And it turns out that if we uh, think of a gas in a container, can't really use a balloon this time, so we'll think about it in terms of a flask, since it, the flask would have a constant volume what would happen to the pressure inside of this container if we increased the temperature? 
Well, since the uh, volume can expand, as it did in our last example, the uh, increase in temperature would give the gas molecules more kinetic energy, and so they would strike uh, this uh, container with more force and increase the temperature. So just like volume and temperature, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. If we increase the temperature, we increase the pressure. And so we can develop the same uh, two mathematical representations for Gay-Lussac's law. Pressure over temperature in two different scenarios would equal each other. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And we can also say that uh, pressure is proportional to temperature.